Buenas tardes. I grew up in the U.S.-Mexican border. Back then, there was a special car that allowed you to go across the border to shop, visit relatives, you know, make it a day trip. You could only stay for 72 hours, and you had to stay along the city limits of the Rio Grande Valley. If you were a minor, you took a family picture that allowed you to cross the border as a unit. This is the picture I remember the most. My mom holding me on her lap, my brothers next to me, all of us very presentable, but not smiling. Our whole family in a picture meant to give us permission to go to the other side, but only for a little bit. Years later, I moved to Ohio, December of 1992. It was winter, a cold day like today. I struggled to adjust that first year because where I grew up, we don't really have seasons, and nature doesn't look much different from month to month. Since moving, I've often thought about the concept of home. I've lived in many cities and houses since leaving Mexico. Home for me right now is Ohio. So my desire to understand how other Latinos felt about living here grew out of my own story. I wanted to know if, like me, they struggled to learn English, to adapt to a new physical environment. I wanted to know if they still wanted to go home, wherever that was, or if they made Ohio home. So I started an oral history project in 2014 to document these stories. What is oral history? Oral history is the exchange of stories and histories between an interviewer and a, na a narrator. My work collecting and using oral histories in the classrooms allows the Latinx population to take ownership of their own story and to help us see the complexity of our identities. Oral history makes written history, data, statistics, dates, personal. It brings human connection, and it helps us understand a different community, perhaps a different time, and how those stories are part of a collective experience that includes you and me. Numbers and statistics offer you one type of information about a group. But does it tell you that Latinos are Mexican, Puerto Rican, Dominican, and many other nationalities? And does it tell you that we look different, that we speak with different accents, that some of us are bilingual, some do not speak Spanish, while others are still learning English? Does the graphic I showed you earlier tell you anything about what we like to eat, the music we enjoy, the religions we practice, and that we love, laugh, and grieve in two languages? Yes. We have twice the fun and twice the sorrow. Oral history is not a new method for collecting stories about a group. In fact, it is the oldest form of preserving history. There was oral history and storytelling before the written word. Yet, it hasn't always been seen as factual or true because it relies on memories, it includes emotions, it can be messy. In essence, it's human. Oral history is about documenting somebody's recollection of a particular moment, an event, or life history. But it's often more than that for those of us, those of us doing this work. It is a collective experience of coming together to share stories, to receive them, and to learn from them. I remember interviewing this group of Mexican-American men who grew up in Lorain, Ohio in the 1940s. When we met, they were curious about me, so they asked me where I was from and why I was doing this project. So we connected over familiar cities in Texas and the border towns. And it was at this moment, this moment of acknowledgement, that I was allowed to interview them. Because you see, there needs to be trust in telling story, a moment of connection, a safe space for being vulnerable. 
They told me about boyhood in South Lorraine in the 1940s and 50s as a time when everyone played, laughed, and enjoyed each other's company. They also told me about their family and neighborhood experiences in this town. But what I remember the most is their friendship. Arturo, Amado, Pepe, Alex, and Roberto meet every Tuesday to share a meal, laughter, and stories together. I've also interviewed women who are immigrant, migrant, and Ohio-born, and they helped me understand what it was like to arrive at a moment when there were very few Latinos in the state. Like you and me, they care about their family, their work, and their community. The generational differences among them is as important as what each of them does to make Ohio home, or in the case of Adriana, the youngest one here, to understand herself in relation to other Latinos around her. Sometimes I interview multiple generations in one family. And at this very moment of storytelling, they continue to learn from each other. And yes, sometimes they finish each other's sentences. Our lives are complete because we have moments of laughter and sadness. If you only read statistics about this population, you will miss knowing that the Mexican-American community has an over 100-year-long history of migration to Ohio, many of them from Texas. That the women express their identities, joys, and sorrow through art, Mexican dances, and that, that they often have a love-hate relationship with English and Spanish. That one year after I collected the story, one woman died. And the family was forever grateful of having this recording of hers. One of the most rewarding experiences as an educator is to offer an opportunity for my students to come alongside and do this work. They sometimes conduct their own interviews, add their own insights, learn to listen into languages, and have this one-on-one -on -one moment that gives them a deeper sense of community, sometimes their own community. And we make this, this work personal, very personal, through performance. We are not just receiving our narr narrator's histories, we respond with our own experiences. We engage in dialogue to find a common ground. We tell our stories of pride, hardship, language, identity. It is very personal. Performing oral history allows us to bring the stories that we learn to you, our audience. The performance is an invitation for you to think about how our stories connect to yours and your stories connect to ours. So I ask you today, what's your story? I grew up bilingual, speaking Spanish to my father and grandparents and English to my mother and sisters. I grew up scared to mix the two languages together because I feared if I spoke Spanglish, my Mexican identity would be questioned for allowing too much influence from the US. But every now and then, I would notice how my mom would slip into Spanish, yesterday in el trabajo, or how my dad would use English to refer to things like Christmas and party. Spanglish is present in my household every day. It is not that I'm allowing English to influence my Spanish, rather Spanglish is a part of my identity and it is a reflection of how I choose to communicate. I was raised by a single mother who is so authentically herself, it almost embarrassed me to be around her. I never imagined that my identity, the food I ate, the way we communicated in a mix of English and Spanish, and even my hair would be questioned by others until it was consistently. I'm Mexican, as Mexican as I ever was and as Mexican as I ever can be. A Latina, just like my mom, right? 
Growing up in the growing up in the suburbs of Ohio as a Mexican and Honduran Latina, I imagine I'm not alone in saying that I always strived for a greater sense of belonging within the primarily Mexican community of my area. I suppose I was never Mexican enough. Maybe I just didn't look the part. Though I can't say I ever felt out of touch with my roots, I never felt like I quite fit in to the, to the community. Here, Columbus has begun to feel like a second home to me because of the Latinos I've met here. And for that, I am eternally grateful. I see myself reflected in the woman in my family. I embody the strength, determination, and grit of my mother and therefore mothers. Our diverse nature and culture shines in a country where women are so often silenced. Yet, us Latinos are often judged by the color of our skin, the shape of our bodies, and the accents of our speech. I carry the lessons and labors of my foremothers, always remembering to keep my identity close. Thank you.